17 Signs of a Toxic Person. This is Law of Attraction Secrets. Join Miracle Mentor and Alchemy Life Coach Robert Sink and prepare to be empowered. Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time you're listening to this special Law of Attraction podcast, I am your Miracle Mentor, your Mentor of Light, Robert Zink. And today, we are soaring high like a big, beautiful eagle flying in the direction of your dreams and your goals. I feel good. How about you? Do you feel good? Say it aloud. I feel good. You know, but I don't care how good you feel. I don't care how well you've trained yourself. If you're around one of these super toxic people, it can really upset your day. And if you're living with one, or if you're in business with a toxic person, or in a relationship, or your boss is toxic, it can be devastating. I mean, it can just make your life miserable. One of the things that I would suggest you do, you know, you hear people say, well, just get out of the relationship. But sometimes it's not quite so simple. So be sure, now listen to this, be sure and compensate for their toxicness with increased optimism and positivity and resourcefulness. Okay, let's get on with the list, but be sure if you haven't already subscribe to us on YouTube, click the bell icon because we're beginning new live videos and live streaming. That's what we're doing. And we're going to take question and answer during the live streaming. That's the fun part about it all. We want you to participate. Rachel and I are going to be in it together. It's going to be great live streaming question and answers on the law of attraction, personal empowerment, business relationships, you name it. Okay. So you have to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for sharing this podcast with all of your friends and family around the internet. It means a great deal to us and your letters, your letters just, I mean, they just literally tear us apart with that good feeling. I mean, they just open us up and I, I don't know how to describe it. We feel so absolutely wonderful after reading some of your letters. We got a letter today from a lady in London. I've been wanting to write you a long time, but I was waiting for the happy ending. I just got a notification about your new podcast and I jumped from excitement and had a feeling for writing you. Let me introduce myself. My name is, I won't mention her name. I'm originally from Lithuania. Been living in London for nine years now. Last year was extremely transformational to me. And I must say it is thanks to your podcast. I can't remember how I found it, but I just got hooked up straight away. At that time, I was confused about my life, about myself. I started focusing and listening to all your tips that you gave. I did the affirmations, the creative visualization. I've always eaten clean, but recently I'm eating a plant-based food diet. I started reading every day, doing yoga, meditating daily, and just focusing on myself, mind, body, and spirit. I love your podcast and all that you do. My life has changed dramatically. I must say I am a happy person. Now life has never been better. So is my relationship. Okay. And she goes on, but I want to thank her for that beautiful letter. You know who you are. Wonderful. Wonderful. We just, we get excited when we get those. And they just make us feel, we don't share them all. We can't share them all. But this one was a real nice one. We wanted to share it with you. 17 signs of a toxic person. Number one, bad personal hygiene. 
I remember when I was in broadcast school and I was 17, there was a guy there. We called him Blue Jay Cook because he always wore a blue sweater, this same blue sweater. And I'm certain he never washed it or the shirt underneath it. And when you'd be within three or four feet of Blue Jay Cook and he would smell B.O. It was terrible. You know, lack of brushing teeth, uh, all kinds of things that people can do wrong when it comes to hygiene. But lack of personal hygiene, come on, get up in the morning, get fired up. Okay, get excited. And part of that is taking yourself, your body to the next level. Number two is sarcasm. You know, I have to say, you know, working in the entertainment field for years, I was a little bit sarcastic about a lot of things. And I catch myself even now being a little bit sarcastic. Cut the sarcasm. It does not empower you. It does not empower others. It doesn't make people feel good. And it's really not all that funny. You're the only one who thinks it's funny. Number three, jealous and envious. There's nothing worse than being in a relationship with somebody who's envious and jealous. And even if they're not jealous at you, they're jealous at the world, they're jealous at other people who are successful. This is a toxic person. If you're one of these people, give it up. Stop it right now, okay? Gossip, number four on the list. Ah, oh, yeah, gossip. Hey, did you hear about Jim the other day? You know, look at anybody who will talk bad about someone when they're not present will talk bad about you eventually when you're not present. So when you hear gossip, just say, hey, I'm really not interested in that, but hey, thanks a lot anyway, and move on. Number five, always pointing out the negative. Toxic people love to just point out, this is negative. This is bad. This isn't going to work. This can't happen. They are just overrun with limiting beliefs. They are crawling on the ground like a slug. They are far from flying in the air like a beautiful eagle. They're always negative. You are about to experience a miracle. Claim your free 30 minutes of miracle mentoring and alchemy life coaching. Visit www.lawofattractionsolutions.com. This is the number one podcast on personal empowerment, success, and the law of attraction. You're listening to the Miracle Mentor of Light, Robert Zink. How about the passive aggressive types? Number six on the list passive aggressive. You know, they won't talk to you. I'm not talking to you. I have people in my family that way, you know, and I know people in other people's families. They will call me and they'll say, yeah, my uncle doesn't talk to me anymore. Won't take my calls or my brother won't take my calls. What the F is that? Your family, for God's sakes. I'm, you may not agree with everything. You may not agree with their choices in life, who they married, what church they go to, what religion they belong to, you know, but they are family or friends. You know, anybody that plays the passive aggressive game really doesn't have it together very well. And they're very, very toxic. Well, the same goes for the narcissist. If you're with a narcissist, good luck. I wish you well, because it is a tough road to hoe. Uh, and if you need help, Google is filled with information on what exactly narcissism is or how to tell if you are living with a narcissist. I invite you to read some of those articles. They're not by me, but they're good articles. I highly recommend them. Game players, people that just like to play mind games all the time. They're toxic. Stay away. Judging others. Are you judging other people? Are you judging what people do, what they, how they live, where they live, what they believe in? That's toxic. And it doesn't empower you. It doesn't raise your vibration in any way, shape, or form. Number 10, trying to rescue everyone. You know, there are some seriously toxic people. And I won't say they're all men, but the majority of them are. And they just look for somebody who's gone through a breakup. We work with a lot of people here that have gone through serious breakups. 
but they look through some, for someone who's gone through a breakup and then they'll sit there and they will agree with that person on how evil that person's ex is. And it's all designed to be made to feel important, you know, or to be intimate, but it's toxic. You can't rescue everyone. Look at, we mentor thousands of people. We can't rescue everyone. We don't try. Our job is not to fix things for you. Our job is to help you fix things for yourself. Okay. You're living your life. I'm living mine. Rachel's living hers. You know, we're all living our own lives. We can't fix your problem. We can help you fix it. There's the difference. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So watch out for those people that try to rescue everyone. Depressives. Ah, no, it was a bad day. Yeah, sun only came like halfway. Ah, ah. Who wants to be around that energy? If you're one of those people, you need to kick in the ass. You need to get your life together. You need to get motivated. You know, someone said there is no such thing as uh, lazy people. There are people with weak goals, people that don't have clear vision of what they desire and what they want out of life. And a lot of times those people take the depressive route. And if you're taking the depressive route, it's time to get out of it. Number 12, competing against everyone. I say competition is good. We compete against ourselves. We look at every podcast. We look at every video and we say, what can we do to improve it? How can we make it more appealing? for our listeners and our viewers. So we are constantly competing against ourselves to improve, but to compete against everyone else is kind of ridiculous. Now there is a place for competition. It's on the field of competition. It's called sports, the Olympics, baseball, football, soccer, rugby, boxing. Okay. There is where competition is part of the game. It's, it's kind of, well, the game isn't a game. It isn't fun without competition. I know, I know a lot of the egghead psychologists out there want to take competition out of sports, but I've already told Rachel and she agrees with me. I mean, she fully agrees that Julian will never display a participation trophy. It's okay to lose. You see, when you, I'm getting sidetracked, aren't I? But when you lose, it's not that you're a loser, but that you've received feedback on how to train different, how to practice different, how to prepare differently. And if you stay in the game, sure enough, you'll have a day again when you're competing. And instead of taking home the participation trophy, you'll be taking home the big trophy that says winner on it. Okay. I hope that didn't offend you. If it did, eh, that's how I feel. Uh, okay. Competing against everyone. Number 13, point out flaws of everyone. Have you been with those people? They can, they can find a flaw in every single human being alive, except themselves. You don't want to be around those kind of toxic people unless you have to be. And if you have to be, you just want to, you want to counter their negative diatribe on someone with positive in your mind. If nothing else, if you can't say it verbally, counter it in your mind with something complimentary and positive. Well, this is just downright rude. But there are people that get very, very happy, start clapping and cheering, smiling when someone else is down, when someone else has had a bad break, when someone else is, uh, is hurting. And, you know, I I don't want anything to do with those kind of people. I've seen them in my life. I absolutely want nothing to do with them. But there are those people that will celebrate someone else's loss. How sick is that? I hope you're not one because if you are, you can change it and you can raise your vibration 
And when you raise your vibration, you begin to attract more of what you desire. Number 15, unnecessary stubborn. These people that just got to be stubborn. Ah, well, that's how I am. I am what I am, and that's all that I am. I'm Papa the Sailor Man. I'm just stubborn, and you're going to get used to it or get the hell out of my life. I'd leave. You don't need to be around people that are stubborn simply for the reason of being stubborn. There are things that I'm stubborn on, but they're principled reasons. I'm not just stubborn on everything. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm pretty malleable when it comes to different things. Number 16, wishy-washy. Well, that's kind of the opposite of being stubborn. The toxic person who's stubborn he just doesn't want to change his life. And the wishy-washy person is changing his life every five minutes. I don't know what I want to do. What am I going to wear today? Where am I going? I don't know what I'm going to do. And those kind of people, it's like if you're working with one, or if you have a boss that is one, oh, it's like having your head glued to the center of a ping pong ball table. You know, the ball's going back and forth and half the time it's hitting your head. It doesn't feel good. And if you're wishy-washy, you need to define your goals. You need to grow a backbone and you need to move in the direction of your dreams and your goals. Well, number 17 is lack of gratitude. Oh, that's terrible. Because when you lack gratitude, you lack the ability to feel good about life and to manifest what you truly desire. And you, 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 you subtly kind of make other people feel bad about life too. At least that's sometimes your aim. So I know you're not one of those people. Look at it. Look at it. I know that you're listening to this podcast thinking, Robert, why are you talking about these 17 signs of a toxic person? Because none of us here are toxic. And I, I agree with you. I know you're special. I know you're soaring high like a beautiful eagle. I know your dreams are manifesting. But if you run into one and you do have the option of cutting it short or taking a different direction, by all means do so, because these people will make you feel dirty and nasty and they'll bring you down. That's their goal. That's what they, that's what they do. They want to bring you down. Hey, you have a wonderful day. Soar high like a beautiful eagle because you deserve it. Bye-bye now.